everybody. It's time for First Aid, man. Look, this is really, to all our SiriusXM subscribers, this is a part of the package. You know, a lot of us deal with medical issues. If you haven't, you probably one day will, or somebody you know does. And this is an opportunity to get free medical advice from a professional. And to, to, today we got the colon and rectal surgeon here. Dr. Lynn has joined us. Good morning, Dr. Lynn. Good morning. And, and Kelly, we, we have Dr. Lynn here for what? Yeah, so March is Colon Cancer Awareness Month. And Sway, this was important to me because one of a, a beloved hip-hop a legend, Combat Jack, mm -hmm. recently passed away of colon cancer. And, you know, uh, some other people aware, Katie Couric's husband passed away from this. And this is something that was very um, close to my, my interest because when we think of colon cancer, it's for people over it's starting to get checked over 50 but this is now affecting people under the age of 50 and our audience needs to know what are the symptoms how do we get checked and what are the symptoms we need to be aware of because when when, when i think of colon i think of us your intestines using the bathroom and we had to bring you here dr lynn to kind of break it down with the facts so first of all like the colon the colon is where the colon is a tube in the body. It's in the abdomen, and it's about uh, five to six feet long, and it curls around the, uh, the, um, the, the abdomen. It's part of the digestive tract, starting mm -hmm. from your mouth, your esophagus, your stomach, going down to your small intestines, and your colon is basically the, the tube that allows us to eliminate waste. Mm -hmm. But it, it serves other purposes as well, where we absorb water with our colon, it helps us maintain electrolyte and pH um, um, balance, but if we don't treat our colon properly, that's when we start having some problems. You, you, I'm pardon me, Kelly. You're okay. a, a colon and rectal surgeon. Yes. What are the diff What's the? Can you explain the terminology rectal and colon? What, break that down for us. <laughs> a colon and rectal surgeon is someone who operates on the colon, the rectum, and the anus specifically. Okay. So the colon is um, where it's part of the digestive tract, but towards the end you get the rectum and then the anus where the stool comes out. So that whole entire area, which is about five to six feet long, is what I specialize in. How long you've done this? Uh, I've been a surgeon. I've been out where I am for 12 years right now. Uh -huh. And um, I've been out practicing for 20 years. So what does the intestines have to do with the small and large intestines? Can you break that down? Yeah, so absolutely. The small intestine, first of all, all of our digestion starts really in the mouth. When you start, okay. you know, you, you see that burger and you want your mouth starts watering, that's when you start digesting that. The, the esophagus is the conduit for the food to get from the mouth to the stomach. From the stomach, we start having those um, acids and juices that starts breaking it down, and that's where we start some absorption and small bowels where we absorb a lot of our vitamins, minerals, and nutrients. The colon basically is for water absorption, some electrolyte and neutrality, but it's really the area where we're going to concentrate the, the waste, mm -hmm. the elimination, mm -hmm. and let it just come on out. I've been reading um, a lot of um, uh, cases now that it, the colon cancer is affecting the African-American community, community, not only with everyone, but why is that? And why is it affecting uh, people under 50 now? You know, I, I, it's really funny because I, I say that sometimes colon cancer, you know, 30 is the new 50 mm -hmm. because we've got about uh, roughly... 90, 97,000 new cases of colon cancer that's predicted in 2018 and 43,000 cases of rectal cancer. And, there, and as, as Sway said, you know, the difference between colon and rectum, it's, it, there, there is a difference when we're treating it. And of those cancers, you know, we got about 13,500 that are in people who are younger than 50 years of age. And it's really concerning why that's happening. It's simply because yeah. I think a lot of reasons we've got an obesity epidemic. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're eating foods that we have not eaten before. Um, we've got a lot of more antibiotics. We've got a lot of more GMOs. We are a sedentary people. We are not getting up. We're not walking out. Everybody's on their smartphones, their computers. Kids aren't running outside playing. They're not riding their bikes. And those uh -huh. things take, take a toll. I was going to ask you about the foods that we're eating, that we're, consum that we're consuming and what's being put in the foods. Does that play a significant role? I think, you know, there's a lot of studies out there that say it actually does. Um, if you think about it, we're getting a lot more higher, higher fatty foods, more high saturated foods, not a lot of fiber. Yeah. And, you know, we're a 
go, go, go society. So it's a lot easier to go to McDonald's and get a Happy Meal or go to a fast food restaurant, pick something up than actually going home and making something. I was fine. I found something interesting in the Huffington Post they were reading about. Uh, it was titled, Get Your Butts to the Doctor to Prevent uh, Colorectal Cancer. And it was saying screening should begin at the age of 50, but at least one third of people 50 or older, an estimated 38 million Americans, are not getting tested. And I'm just, you know, who thinks that it's like so many tests you have to get, you think, after this age. But now, when I think of that, it's like, are people not using the bathroom and having enough stool? Um, is it the detox? Like, what are you telling your patients coming in? Well, first of all, you know, the incidence of colon cancer is decreasing, but it's de- it's decreasing in amongst the 50 and over. Mm. We are seeing increases in the 30 and uh, 30, 40 year olds. So when you're getting screened, the average Caucasian should be screened around four, at age 50. But for African Americans, Hispanic, Pacific Islanders, we're talking about 45, especially for African Americans, because stage for stage, when we're diagnosed, it's at more advanced stages. Mm. Wow. So why should, is that? Let's talk about why that is, and then let's talk about how to get tested. Like, what's that procedure like? Okay, Dr. Lynn is here. We're going to come back and we're going to open up the phone lines. Now, if you're within these age brackets, you should be paying close attention because a lot of folks think that this can affect you. You know, I'm someone in my 40s, so I need to figure this out. You might, uh, you might have to probe my ass, doctor. <laughs> I just want to. I mean, I I'm might sorry, not mind sir, it. All right, all right. 888 I'm just saying. <laughs> She's a colon and rectal uh, surgeon uh, from Queens. She knows her hip hop. She grew up around LL Cool J and. And Run DMC and, you know, Jam Master J used to go rest in peace with the MC Shan, Roxanne Shante, got the new movie on Netflix. Yes, and we were talking about March is, we're ending the month of March, and March has been the Colon uh, Cancer Awareness Month, and it was really important to talk about this because when we think about colon cancer, we think of people over the age of 50, but it's affecting people under the age of 50. And I, I think uh, just like I know someone is listening out there who may not understand it, and they're like, what are the symptoms, Dr. Uh, Doctor Lynn? You know, a lot of people think about these symptoms, and they just brush them off. If you notice that you're having a change in your bowel habits, if you're not going as much as you normally go, mm. if the, uh, the size is different, the color is different, people are like, I don't look at my stool. Turn around and look at your stool. Look if there's a different size, a different color, if you're having rectal bleeding, if you are at a point where your appetite has changed, you have weight loss, um, you've got abdominal pain. And the problem is a lot of these symptoms, when you get them, the, the, the disease is already far advanced. Wow. When, when you say size, like what if it's smaller, if it's bigger? Like pencil thin stools, you know, because you should really be having a, a, a nice bulky size stool. Every time you mention these stools, Tracy goes al- on alert. What's why? You know what, Doc? Because there's a lot of poop shaming that happens, and particularly in the studio, but I won't name any names. <laughs> and sometimes I wonder if you're not pooping once a day, then something might be off, right? Because some folks don't want to eat particular vegetables, healthy things, because it's going to make them go to the bathroom. And I'm like, you want to go to the bathroom. Ideally, it'd be nice if you go every day. Mm-hmm. But some people go every other day, and that's their normal. That's the thing. You have to just, you have to realize what your normal is. Mm-hmm. Why you have to look at your stool, you have to be able to say, is there a change? Mm-hmm. And if you don't look, and if you're not aware of it, then there's a change. And food is clearly important. You need fruits, you need vegetables, you need fiber, and you need a lot of fluids. And that's what people are not getting. Oh, and there, there's a relationship between obesity, diet, and exercise, they, they believe, and there's a correlation for the risk of colon cancer. Mm-hmm. You, you know, like clockwork, every single morning. <laughs> Every single morning, I go to the bathroom at the same time. And he lets us know, too. Yes. Every single morning. And that's good. That's, that's good. That's good poopy. And then exactly. sometimes I'm good poopy. And then sometimes <laughs> um, I get I might get an extra one in at night. And, and you know what? That's fine. Because if you're eating, you want it takes about 36 hours for the food that you eat to come through you. So if it's sitting there for two or three days, you're constipated. And if you're not eating a good enough fiber, fruits, vegetables, and fluid, that's when you're going to start getting constipated. And that, that's going to be uncomfortable. I was told when it floats, that means you're getting the fat out of your body. Is that true? Yes. You want you want a nice <laughs> size stool that's going to just dive right in like a scuba diver. So, 
And you want a good, you got to want a good dark brown consistency. Now, also, the color of your stool is going to change depending upon what you eat. Because I've yeah. had patients come and they've had a ton of leafy green vegetables and their stool's green and they're a little concerned. It really depends on what you're going to eat. If you eat a lot of beets, a lot of cranberries, you may see a little bit of redness in your stool as well, too. But if there's ever a question, you just need to find your doctor. All right. We're going to go to the phone lines. And, and this is a serious topic. And we, we're trying to have this conversation um, as if you're in your living room and you're not in the medical field and you don't necessarily understand the terminology. And uh, we got Tracy on the line from Tennessee. Good morning, Tracy. Great Good morning, name. Tracy. Good morning, you guys. Good morning. So how are you doing this morning, Tracy? I'm good. It's raining. Uh, yeah, it is raining, but you woke up breathing, Tracy. Come on. Rain is necessary for yeah. growth. Yes. <laughs> tell, tell us your story. What you want to say to Dr. Lynn? Well, I'm 38 now. At the age of 34, I was diagnosed with sex care. Wait, 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 can you turn your radio down for me, Tracy? There you go. You okay. got it. Go ahead. Okay. Um, at the age of 34, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Um, the symptoms were like off the wall because at the time I was working with um, a um, oncologist, a surgeon. Tracy, so, Tracy, I can you take it off speaker, so please? Yeah, Tracy, you, we can't hear you. you take it off speaker because I was trying to understand what you were diagnosed at 34. What type of cancer? I think she said rectal cancer. Rectal cancer. Okay. Okay, there you go. You sound a lot better. Go ahead. Okay, I apologize. I had it on the car phone. All right. Um, yeah, at 34, I was diagnosed with rectal cancer. And at the time, I was working with a surgical oncologist, so I knew all the things that were coming in and seeing different things. And I was like, okay. Let me check myself because I'm having some of these symptoms. I used to just brush them off. Um, so I ended up going to the, the gastroenterologist, and I told him my symptoms. We did a colonoscopy, and it came back positive for rectal cancer. So um, Had a lower anterior resection done. Um, it was at the early stage, stage one, and... It just got to the point where, wow, I'm this young and I got this. Wow. Wow. So how how are you now? So, I'm fine. I have my CTs done every six months. Colonoscopies can be done every year to two years. Um, it, it's just scary every time I have the test because it's like, you know, I'm not out of my five-year mark yet. Mm-hmm. What are CTs? She said. What? She uh, that's a, a CAT scan of the abdomen and pelvis. And what 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 she did do was she actually paid attention to her symptoms, which was important. And she saw her gastroenterologist or her colorectal surgeon. And if you get a colonoscopy, that is the one diagnostic as well as therapeutic option that a patient has where you can actually see something, biopsy it, or remove the polyps. And that's why it's important to get screened early if you start having some symptoms. And you can have a colonoscopy. You can remove the polyps before it actually becomes a cancer. In her case, it already became a cancer. And if you get this early, there's a 95% five-year survival rate. So if, if you're paying attention to your symptoms, if you have a family history, um, you need to start getting screened earlier. Tracy, thank you. Thank you for sharing your story, thank Tracy. You. All right, and then also... Thank y'all have a great day today. Same you to too, you. you too. Um, what is your social media if people want to contact you? If uh, you want to contact me, you can contact me at uh, Twitter at LennOConnorMD.com, my website, www.LennOConnorMD, um, and you can follow me on Facebook at Lynn O'Connor. Lynn O'Connor. MD. Okay. Uh, Jerry from Virginia. Good morning. How you doing? Hey, Jerry. Hey, how you doing, y'all? Good uh, morning. Go, go, go ahead, Jerry. What's your uh, question? Just a quick, like, uh, what would be the best advice that you could give to somebody as far as about the insurance process? for? Because, you know, there is those certain levels of uh, uh, insurance where they only tell you but so much, depending on how much you can afford. Hmm. And and this is a very serious uh, thing that you're talking about. So it's like, if a person doesn't have that certain level of insurance, how what would be like the best advice or helpful direction that they should go in? Well, if the thing is, if you are having any symptoms and if you're having a problem, then that's something where you would be able to go to your physician and have them recommend you have a colonoscopy. The average screening is 50 for uh, Caucasian males and females. However, for 45, then you're, you should be cleared to have screening at that age. 
um, if you are having a problem, then it should be indicated for you to be able to have that have have that um, that testing. What you need to do is call your insurance company and speak directly with your insurance company, or you can have your physician call as well, and they can do what they what they call a peer to peer review, where you have one physician talking to another physician, and they can discuss the symptoms and see what they need to do to get this insurance coverage. Wow, that's great, man. Dr. Lynn has given us some awesome advice. Jerry, um, I hope you uh, – and, and if you missed some of the commentary she uh, gave us today, you can also go online on demand at yes. SiriusXM. Slash on demand dot com slash on demand. Doctor, you – so are the prices different depending on your race? No. Oh, okay. I thought you said it was no, an no. amount for Caucasian. No. I, what I'm saying is the indication for screening because when, sometimes some insurances will say, well, there's no reason for you to have a certain test. Okay. So, you know, this, this, the, um, the recommendation from the American Cancer Society for average screening is age 50. Mm -hmm. However, what we're trying to get the message out is that for certain races, um, you need to start screening at 45. Right. Simply because when, you, when those... Um, folks are diagnosed, they're usually at advanced stages. Right. And if you have a family history of colon cancer, say if mm. your your mother was forty five, then you should start screening ten years before that before age. Before forty five. So exactly at oh. thirty five. Wow. Jasmine's on the line from Ohio. Say hello to Dr. Lynn, Jasmine. Hey Jazzy. Good morning, Doctor Lynn. Good morning, Swear in the morning family and Kelly. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Good morning. Great, great. My name is yeah, I'm Jasmine from Ohio and um unfortunately I lost my mother this past October, um, she was diagnosed at 43 in 2014 and passed at 46. Wow. I'm so sorry. Wow. So, so you, and, um, and so, I'm sorry. What is your message to our listeners then? With that said, I'm I, sorry I, about I the loss. I definitely agree that it's important to go early. I'm actually headed today for my appointment, and I also feel like, you know, if you guys can correct me, that it's important to make sure eating properly, no red meat, clean your water, and veggies. And I think that's very important. What about that? You know what, Jasmine, thank you for sharing your story, and, and we're sorry about your loss. Yeah. Um, but thank you thank very you, much. Thank you. Okay, and you're a citizen, Jasmine. Good in the morning. Yeah. Um, thank you. Uh, the, the, the whole thing about meat, let's talk about meat. Like, how many vegetarians... Do, do, have y'all done a test, like research on <laughs> vegetarians or vegans compared to carnivores, meat eaters? Not that I know of at this juncture. However, no. you know, the thing is, everything is in moderation. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> some of the things that you want to do is you want to obviously clearly not smoke. Um, if you're going to have alcoholic beverages, moderation. Everyone's going to have a red, uh, you know, a steak every now and then. What we're talking about is if you're going to have foods such as bacon, the cured meats, the processed meats every single day, yeah. then that's what's going to be a problem. If you splurge one day and you have, you're going out on your birthday and you have a steak, that's not going to be the one thing that's going to do you in. But you need a consistent diet of fruits, vegetables, high fiber. You should try to shoot anywhere from 20 to 35 grams of fiber a day. And that's pretty simple to get. The average American only gets about 13 grams of fiber, if that, a day. And that's not enough. And you need enough fluid to be able to wash everything down uh -huh. and, and um, have help with your bodily functions. Francesco, what is your question? He's from Queens, by the way. He might live around the corner from you. <laughs> Francesco, morning. go ahead. Hey, Sway in the morning. How we doing? Doing Good great, morning. man. Say what up to Francesco. Yay! My man. You got a question? Hey, it's, it's, I do. Uh, it's actually Francesco. It's Italian. Oh, Francesco. Okay. Arrivederci. It's all good. <laughs> all right. Go ahead. So uh, my question, um, she was mentioning fiber. And, of course, that's tough uh, because a lot of people don't like their green veggies. But um, I was wondering, I eat a lot of oatmeal. Mm. And I know that uh, fiber can come in different forms. I was wondering if there's a difference really between, like, the oatmeal and green and green veggies like uh can i just eat bowls of oatmeal and and be okay or well, how, how does how does that work when it comes to something like that that's a great question oatmeal has three grams of fiber so you are on your way but you need at least 20 to the 35 grams a day oh, fiber <laughs> by, and it's wow. and it's not that hard to get because there's there's two types of fiber there's the insoluble fiber and there's the soluble fiber mm. so when you're thinking about insoluble fiber think about things that don't absorb water such as the green leafy vegetables the cauliflower 
And then you can think about soluble fibers such as your oatmeal, foods that do absorb water. And most of our foods really have a combination of them because if you look at an apple, the skin of the apple is insoluble and the skin of and and the flesh of the apple is soluble, meaning that you have both types of food that absorb and don't absorb water. That's important so you can have a softer but bulkier stool that comes through. And that's why it's important for you to have that fiber diet. You can have greens, you can have beans. And if you like bagels, have a whole wheat bagel. If you like pizza, have a whole wheat pizza. Um, if you're gonna have sandwiches, go for the whole grain bread. Those are ways that you can actually get a good amount of fiber. Just a bowl of Kellogg's All Brand gives you 14 grams of fiber. <laughs> you have one serving of green beans, that's nine grams of fiber. You're at 23 right then and there. So, and if you just add on another, a banana, something of that nature, you've hit your mark. What are some good apps maybe you can recommend that help you to see like how much fiber and other nutrients you get in a day? You can just you know really, I mean? there's so many programs out there. You can just basically Google anything. Weight Watchers has wonderful apps out there. Mm -hmm. um, you can also on your, your watches, your Fitbit, your Apple, they have all those, th all those apps that will help you watch your calories, watch your diet, and what you're putting in. Right. Dr. Lynn is here, um, and this is uh, Colon Cancer Awareness Month. Yes, March. And um, you can find her on social media at? You can find me on uh, LinkedIn. Um, you can find me on Facebook, Lynn O'Connor MD. You can find me at Twitter, at Lynn O'Connor MD, and on my website, LynnOConnorMD.com. Now, in closing, if I come to your office, walk <laughs> me through the process. If you come to my office, you're going to check in with the young ladies and the gentlemen at the front desk. Okay. You'll come in, you'll see me, we'll sit down for a consultation. Mm -hmm. And I will explain to you everything that you're going to need to do for your colonoscopy, which is going to be the most important thing a lot of people are afraid of is the prep. The prep, you have to clean yourself out, but it's not really that bad. It's important for you to follow the instructions for the prep so that you're clean. And if I see any polyps, I can remove them. You're completely asleep for the procedure. There's an anesthesiologist. It's quick acting. You need someone to bring you simply because it is anesthesia. There's minimal risk in terms of um, bleeding if we have to remove a polyp, or there's perforation, which means there's a hole in the colon. But that's less than one half of 1%. Patients do just fine with this, and the benefits clearly outweigh any of the risks. Um, what what is it about the the cleaning out process that people don't like, well, and, how, and how long does that last? <laughs> people don't like to actually have to, you know, it's the it's the loose stools, the watery stools, the diarrhea that has that you have to, you have to stay next to but, a bathroom. But, but how do you do it? Like, are you taking coal or something? Oh. <laughs> like, how do you get it out? Like, okay, what well, you're gonna have you'll be on clear liquids the entire day. Okay, so if your colonoscopy is on a Tuesday, Monday morning, when you wake up, just clear liquids like apple juice, Jello. Chicken broth, ginger ale, Italian ice, it's all clear liquids, no solid food. Okay. And then you do the prep. I like to use a couple of liquid preps, one that's called Suprep. And um, you get six ounces of fluid, 10 ounces of water. You shake it up, you drink it. It's eight ounces. Uh, it's uh, water before, during, and after, and you repeat that in the afternoon. In the evening, it's split dosing. And studies have shown split dosing preps are a little bit more effective now. But there are so many different preps out there, and it really depends on what your medical history is, um, whether or not you have any other medical problems, mm -hmm. and uh, any allergies. So you'll, be, you'll follow up with your uh, primary care physician, your colorectal surgeon, your gastroenterologist to decide which prep is best for you. And what is a colonic? Mm. And do you mm -hmm. recommend those? Right. I personally do not recommend colonics. And the reason I don't recommend colonics is because God made your body just the way it should be. And if you're eating right, you're exercising, you're drinking enough fluids, you will cleanse your colon the natural way. Sometimes there's hidden dangers with colonics. People do coffee ground enemas. I've had people come in and their rectums have been burned. Oh. Um, exactly. People have done... Uh, you have to infuse water through a tube into the rectum. There's been um, accidental holes and perforations made. You have to infuse fluid in there. could be fluid overload. People have, can have cardiac events because of that. They can have electrolyte abnormalities. And the colon has natural um, bacteria. There's good bacteria and bad bacteria. And they live together in uh, equal amounts. Okay. If you have a colonic, you can disrupt that equilibrium, mm -hmm. and then patients can have uh, some sig significant problems, such as diseases from that. 
Dr. Lynn, you are the bomb. Uh, well, <laughs> well, Sway, you know, uh, Dr. Dr. Lynn, I was, you. you are the bomb because I looked on your bio and you're one of my soros of Alpha Kappa oh, Alpha yeah. Sorority Incorporated. You so, you know, we bring quality <laughs> stuff up here. Don't look that way, Sway. Well, just that gang talk again? Absolutely. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm so I was pleasant. I've really learned a lot. I hope uh, everyone who's listening has learned a lot from it. We have to get screening. It's very Absolutely. important. And the good thing is early detection you can get cured from this you can live and and tell your testimonies for this absolutely and we've heard from people just like tracy who called you, you recognize your symptoms early detection early cure and if you can get screened you can actually prevent colon cancer because you can get these polyps before they actually turn into a cancer right so and the one thing I want to make people know is this is a conversation you need to have. You need to speak to your family. You need to speak to your friends. No one likes to talk about this, but you need to know your family history. Did grand, What did grandma die of? Was it colon cancer? Did my parents have screening? Or do, do my brothers and sisters have polyps? No one talks, and we need to talk about this. Absolutely. Dr. Lynn, thank you for coming thank by. You so much. Reach out to her, citizens. The conversation doesn't have to stop here. If you hit her up on social media and mention Sway the Morning, uh, she'll gladly respond to your questions. Once again, you can reach her on social media at? You can reach me. I'm on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter at LynnOConnorMD.com. Facebook, follow me, Lynn O'Connor, MD, And um, my website, www.LynnOConnorMD. And you spell it? I spell it L-Y-N-N-O-C-O-N-N-O-R. N-N-O-R. O-R. Okay, that's what's up. Like operating room. There you go. I exactly. got it. I'm with that's you, Doc. That's the way I like I'm it. Yes, you, operating yeah. room. And citizens, follow me at Kelly Kincaid, K-E-L-L-Y-K-I-N-K-A-I-D. I-D. <laughs> I know, oh, I-D. Okay. No, you said it right. I that's what you mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right, cool. That's what's up. Thank you, Dr. Lynn. Thank you, Kelly Kincaid. That's you. first aid. Up next, we got her. Uh, A.K.A. Gabby Wilson to be here to talk about um, all the great things that's happened in her career. We were the first to put her out here on a platform maybe almost four years ago. And now she's about to go on tour with Black, uh, Chris Brown, yep. and others. All right. She's going to be here momentarily. Sway the morning shade for a five.